Hey everybody, this is Ted Jenkins, small business expert, right here on the Atlanta Small Business Profile. I am so excited to interview my friend today, the CEO, Dr. Damon Williams. He is one of the experts in the country. We're gonna learn all about today, about diversity and inclusion. And I wanna know, because I know that you, I mean, your background's unbelievable. You've worked in universities all over the United States. How did you decide to get into this business and why is it so important right now for organizations? You know, I, I think that now, probably as never before, issues of diversity and inclusion are top of mind for everybody. Just think about for it. For everybody, even a small business owner, I mean, giant corporation, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. Everybody from the MBA to mom and pop uh, stores are thinking about diversity, whether you're talking about it in terms of the consumers that you're trying to reach, or you're talking about it in terms of the staff or the colleagues that you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis. So talk to me a little bit. I read that you're embarking on something amazing now, which is this inclusive excellence tour in here that you're gonna take more than a million leaders across the United States, some 5,000 organizations and learn how to empower them. How do you go, this seems like a pretty big mission. How do you go about breaking this down and, and actually in your business expanding it across the country? So a couple things. One is we've been moving around the ecosphere, uh, touching base with uh, companies, college and universities, and engaging in residencies where we're spending one, two, and three days. And in one residency, we may touch as many as a couple thousand persons at a given institution a or A couple thousand people at one time in, in one, one time. leadership course. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And in some instances, even more than that, when we're doing simulcasting. The second thing that we're doing is we have a leadership academy, and we run that academy every summer, and it's a more intense experience and the third thing that we're doing is webinars uh, just engaging in online learning opportunities giving people the skills That's big with technology today absolutely there's really no way to do it other than that if you want to scale <laughs> right well especially when there's only one of you right now and I was gonna ask you I mean how do you do that I mean you are such the expert you have such an amazing background how do you scale out a company like yours when you have to tackle this type of big mission well, Ted, we're at the beginning of that journey, so I don't want to act <laughs> as if we've got all the answers here. Uh, but a couple of things. One is content, 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 right? Uh, books, obviously, articles, white papers, things that we produce, but also video content, short form, longer form, uh, and really creating platforms that allow for folks to be able to access uh, the ideas, the thinking, the tips, the strategies that we're right. putting together. I'm curious about that because I know when I spoke to you that you've literally now shot hundreds of videos and recently you created new video courses. How'd you go about setting those up so you knew how to produce the right content to put out, not only in the courses, but what you decide to launch on the internet? You know, everything we do is uh, evidence-based, right? So it's inspired by research, uh, inspired by data collection that I've done and others. And so for us, in terms of understanding some of the sweet spots of what folks are looking for, tips on unconscious bias, right. how to overcome microaggressions, how to build everyday cultures of inclusion, that came right from the research and also my lived experience. I've had a chance to work with over a thousand organizations. A thousand. A thousand. <laughs> uh, and in each and every one of those instances, you learn something new. So where, where are people failing? You know, I have a small business out there. I might have five employees. I might have 50 yeah. employees. Where are most companies today failing when it comes to inclusion and it comes to just diversity overall? Because people hear that term, Damon, and they yeah. hear, oh, I need to be a more diverse organization. But I don't yeah. think a lot of business owners know what that means exactly. Sure. So the diversity piece of it is what we're doing to ensure that we've got individuals of different backgrounds, perspectives, thought patterns from different parts of the country to bring that diversity to bear in our organizations to really have dynamic teams that can help us to build solutions and get things done. Right. What we found in the research is that diversity and talent always trumps homogeneity and talent. So what I mean by wow. that is when you got diverse groups, diverse teams, and they're able to come together and work effectively together, they produce better results. Now, the work effectively together, that's the inclusion part, right? right? That's the belonging part. And that's where the difficult work really comes. One of the things I believe individuals fail at and companies fail at is they make diversity real big and up on <laughs> high, right? At the end of the day, friend, it comes down to how do you get to the blocking and tackling of building relationships, affirming the folks that you're in the journey with, and helping to create a community of like-minded folks that come together towards the mission, but they bring their diverse perspectives towards accomplishing that mission. You know, Damon, you've been successful uh, not only writing eBooks, but also books that you put out and you published already. And there, there are a lot of owners that always think about, should I write a book? Yeah. And then two, how do I get this thing published? I mean, 
What can you share about your experiences about, is it smart to write eBooks? Is it smart to write regular books? And, and get that out there to grow your brand name. Well, Ted, as you know, I'm a recovering academic, right? So <laughs> I kind of right. made, made my trade, right? Uh, writing traditional books. But, but a couple of pieces of advice I give. One, eBooks are a great low barrier to entry way of getting your ideas in the world. But does an eBook have to be a book book, Damon? Or could it just be one or two pages? Or is it... Well, as a recovering academic, I would say <laughs> an e-publication could be one or two pages. There we go. An e-book probably needs to be a little more substantive. Right. But what I do think is important is for leaders to have a commitment to getting their ideas in the world. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your time at the Boys and Girls Club uh, of America because being the VP and Chief Educational Officer and running this as a worldwide uh, organization, how did those experiences help you? Because sometimes people will say, should I work for a company or a nonprofit? A, you know, bust, get my chops uh, yeah. and then, then open my own business. Does this help you in the transition and running your own business? Oh, it, without question, Ted. I think one of the things it did is it helped me to sharpen up on building national strategy, right? So we're working with 4,000 clubhouses, global wow. strategy, working in 70 countries around the, around the world. The second thing it taught me was in the nonprofit world, you got to work three times harder than any other place <laughs> to make that money move. Is that true? That's right. So it's very consistent to the energy of an entrepreneurial startup effort. So, you know, an entrepreneur, any entrepreneurs out there know you're 24-7, 365, trying to get escape velocity and trying right. to really build something that's going to be sustainable. In the non-for-profit world, no matter if it's a venerable organization like Boys and Girls Clubs of America, which I think is one of the greatest organizations in the history of this country, or it's a startup nonprofit that's got one person, that's right, it's incredibly difficult to make that money move because at the end of the day, there's 4 million young people that are relying upon uh, making a difference in their lives and that money helps to make that difference. Damon, for people that are out there and thinking about getting into this world of consulting or even doing um, some online marketing, doing webinars and charging for that, how do you, how do you choose how to take on a customer? And, and when you take them on, how do you choose how to charge them? Because there's only so many of you and you're going to start this journey and there's going to be a large organization that you have, but you still have to be able to pay the bills. How do you know what to charge? Ted, you asked the right question. So <laughs> one of the things I always tell folks is chase the impact, don't chase the dollars. I love if that. You chase, chase the impact, don't chase the dollars. That's right. If you chase the impact, then the dollars will follow if you've got a good product, if you've got a good service. For me, it's always about uh, finding the ways to add value and to drive impact. And then from there, we make the, uh, the rest of the decisions that will cascade from that, that clear insight. You know, I had the ability to watch you actually work on a plane flight. So how do you <laughs> how do you manage your time when you're doing all this and you're flying from university to university, college to college, working with Fortune 500 companies? How do you manage your time to squeeze this all in? It's tough. Uh, I'll say, you know, probably the greatest challenge as a uh, small business is having time for the business and the art. Right. The art is producing the thought leadership is producing the lectures, the right, educational research content. Papers. That's right. Uh, but then on the other side, you know, it's the business and building the business. The key that you have to figure out is having the right people around you that can do the task that they can do. And it allows for you to be freed up to do the task that only you can do. Uh, and so that uh, kind of calculus is one that's it's difficult to figure out and it's a work in progress. For me, I just put in as many hours as I can each and every day, <laughs> try to find the smartest folks I can, the most committed folks I can to work with, and we settle where we settle.